Who were the force wielders that existed before the Jedi? in 36,453 BBY. The eight pyramidal ships known as the Tho Yor called out the Force sensitives on select worlds. Calling them through the Force itself, a great many species boarded these ships and were taken to the world of Titan, where they would soon study the gifts of the Force and become the Jedi Order and then later become the Holy Order of Jedi Knights as we know and love today. The origins of the Jedi is something that we have indeed covered in depth on this channel before. However, a few of our researchers have recently discovered some manuscripts dating back even earlier than the Thoyor ship arrival indicating that the Jedi Order's roots run even deeper than this. So sit with us today, curious acolytes of a galaxy far, far away, as we dive into the Order and debatably the very beginnings of the Jedi. This is the story of the Dai Bendu. Before we begin, it is very much worth noting that the Jedi didn't truly become as we know it until the Tho Yor brought all the Force sensitives to the world of Tython. Before this unifying event, there were many sorcerers, shamans, and monks of the Force spread out all over the galaxy, all living in complete ignorance of each other. We say this to say that the Dai Bendu weren't the only true scholars of the Force at the time, like how many would have you believe. Having said that, they were the most advanced in their studies. The Wookiee shamans of Kashyyyk knew of the Force through their religion rooted in nature. The same can be said about the sorcerers of Dathomir. However, it was the Dai Bendu that were the first ones to call to the Force by that name, and they knew of the midichlorians as well before any of these other factions became aware of its existence. So it can be said that the Dai Bendu were in essence the proto-Jedi. In fact, even the word Jedi comes from the Dai Bendu language. Je meaning mystic and Dai meaning center. The Dai Bendu lived during the early hyperspace age, also known as the pre-republic era, which was the time in the galaxy when every civilization was still very much ancient and beginning to discover who they truly were as a people. At this point in time, interstellar travel was still a very new thing, and hyperspace hadn't been invented at all. Any of these primordial ships could only reach sublight speeds, which made space travel long, tedious, and extremely dangerous. Because of these factors, many species largely lived in ignorance of one another, and cross-species communication had not yet been established by those who did not already live on the same planet. The galaxy was all there, but they were yet to be united. During this time, the galaxy was dominated by many ancient species who have long since been forgotten to time itself, including the ancient dark side order known as the Rakatans and the Celestials of Zell. The Zell were said to be the primordial ancestors of the human race born on Coruscant. The early hyperspace age would be the era that would follow, and it would end in 25,053 BBY, when the Galactic Republic was officially formed and established. Anyway, back to the Dai Bendu and their order. The ancient order of the Dai Bendu arose in the mid-rim region of the galaxy, on an astronomical object by the name of Thape. The date of its emergence was ultimately unfortunately lost to time, but the order existed from the earliest antiquity. At first, the order of the Dai Bendu consisted of peaceful monks dedicated to the study of numerology and holding to non-confrontational principles. It became one of the first groups to ever discovered and be studied the mystic energy that flowed through all living things, and bound the galaxy itself together. Sometime thereafter, the monks made a massive migration to the snowy mid-rim planet of Ondo Prime, as they had discovered that a force nexus was present there. They then lived in isolation, studying the nexus, and becoming one with the force. Around the year 37,453 BBY, the Dai Bendu monks discovered a mysterious pyramidal edifice half buried in the snow, which was the source of this force nexus that they had once felt. Intrigued by this wonder of unidentified origin, they called it the Tho Yor in their language. While they understood that the Tho Yor came from another world, the monks could not yet guess its purpose, or even see what it contained inside of it. Nonetheless, they felt a great power was contained within the Thoyor, and believed that someday they could hear its voice through patient meditation. For many years, the monks gathered round the pyramid, kneeling before their new object of adoration, even under heavy snowfall. Under any physical condition that the monks underwent, they were still there, patiently waiting. Patiently waiting for the Tho Yor to reveal its many secrets and bestow upon them the true gifts of the midichlorians and the Force itself. And as we know, that the prophecy would come true during the Great Migration, 
When this all happened, all eight of the Thoyor ships loaded up many passengers from many planets, and each began to slowly make their way towards the world of Titan. The ships stopped by other planets and picked up more Force-sensitive species. After the arrival on Titan, it is supposed that many of the other species adopted the Dai Bendu terms and religion. It is regarded by many scholars that the Dai Bendu were the true origins of the Jedi Order, as it was their teachings and understanding of the Force that birthed the beginnings of the Jedi, the order that would follow the Dai Bendu. Of course, we believe that although a lot of the Dai Bendu influence was taken, the ancient Jedi likely compiled everyone's current understanding of the Force from each other's species, and then proceeded to study it together on the new world of Tython. Nonetheless, it is believed that many of the core principles adopted by the Jedi originated from the Dai Bendu, including their emphasis on peace, a more simple time in the galaxy, a time in the galaxy where the Dai Bendu was only focused on feeling the Force itself, not corrupting it or using any of its power. They simply sought its presence. They did not master any Force abilities or even really discuss the power that it could grant them. They simply just wanted to understand what it was and then to be around it. This is what it would mean to be a true Jedi Master much later, and it's interesting to consider that some of the only remaining remnants of the Dai Bendu in Star Wars lore is the rank of a Jedi Consulate, a Jedi whose job it is to study the more mystic aspects of the Force and ponder upon it, rather than use it for means of war or combat. But anyway, Acolytes, what do you think of these primordial Jedi, these Force wielders before the Jedi, and before the era of even the Great Migration? Do you agree that they had the greatest influence in the creation of the Jedi Order as we know it? And did you know about the Dai Bendu before this video? What makes this video unique also is this is not a time of war or strife in the Star Wars galaxy, as this represents its very beginnings. As always, students of the Force, thank you so much for watching the channel, hit that subscribe button, and may the Force be with you.